Well, thanks for clicking on to the Monday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Uh, of course, yesterday's video, I spoke about the potential of 40 Celsius in the UK towards Sunday, if not Monday of next week. In today's video, I want to look at the overall picture through this week, in the next weekend, that could lead to extreme heat. And uh, once um, we move into next week as well. So um, we're talking a week away. Still a long way out. Still a lot of details, um, you know, expected to kind of um, chop and change with regards to the model output and, and whatnot. Uh, I want to reiterate the point. I think uh, there is a, a greater potential that we could approach the UK record set in Cambridge in July of 2019 of 38.7 Celsius. Of course, that beat the 2003 record, which was set at 38.5 Celsius in Kent. Um, I do think that has a chance at being threatened. The chance of 40 Celsius being achieved in the UK is much, much lower than that. I think, like I say, we're, we've got a greater chance at, at, at uh, attacking that record, but uh, I think we've got a lower chance, but not, uh, you know, completely out with the realm of possibility of reaching the, the, you know, the infamous 40 Celsius mark in the British Isles. But in today's video, like I say, I want to highlight the setup that we've got over the British Isles, high pressure over the near continent, area of low pressure, to the northwest, we've got an approaching frontal system that has been introducing increased cloud across Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scotland, even the north of England through the course of today. Um, east and south has been best in terms of temperature, uh, slightly less warm to the northwest, as you can see here. This is the current temperatures as of uh, 17.35 or 5.35 p.m., and you can see here a fresher 19 Celsius at Loughless Garnock, even fresher 17 at, uh, at Stornoway. Very pleasant indeed. Um, but, uh, of course, we've got uh, temperatures widely upper 20s to low 30s uh, in the sunshine across the Midlands, the south and the southeast half of the country. Now, as we press through this week, we are actually going to see uh, a cold front. Uh, albeit weakening as it moves south southeast, but what it's going to do is it's going to bring some showery outbreaks of rain through the overnight tonight across uh, central Scotland, into the north and northwest of England, over Ireland as well, and then eventually it's going to peter out over the Midlands of England. What we are going to see is a downward trend in temperature, and across the northern half of the British Isles, we're going to see increased wind, cloud cover, Shari outbreaks of rain, temperatures back into the teens once again towards the middle portion of this week. Wednesday, Thursday, you have to get yourself uh, south Midlands, south and southeastern half of the country. Low to mid-20s, I think, quite widely. So we're simply shrinking that warm air mass. Now, the temperatures yesterday, 29.3 Celsius at Lukers and Fife. Today, I think a Boyne hit 28 Celsius we're going to see the temperatures dropping significantly across the northern half of the British Isles through the course of this week. And you can see here the isobars kind of squeezing together across the north, area of high pressure sinking southwards. So we're going to still hold on to some fairly warm conditions, humid conditions across the south and southeastern half of the British Isles. But it's as we press through the middle portion of this week, you can see weather systems riding across the top of that high that has been displaced to the south of the British Isles. Uh, through the course of the middle portion of the week, westerly winds, fresher conditions, 16, 17, 18 degrees uh, through the central belt of Scotland. So much fresher conditions here. And then as we push towards the, uh, the weekend, once again, we're going to st start to see that area of high pressure re-establish over the British Isles. Notice here across the north and northwest, we have more cloud, more rain, more breeze. But notice here, the high is now sliding back across the southern half of England and Wales. So temperatures come back up once again. And it's, of course, the golden question is exactly 
what takes place now if i look at the broader picture um here it tells a story because we've got an area of low pressure to the south and that area of low pressure could act uh, as a more important factor in terms of how warm it gets during the second half of the upcoming work uh, weekend and in the early next week here i think the core of the heat may now be back um pushed back 24 hours we may see the warmest temperatures actually on monday but that doesn't mean to say that we can't get into the upper 30s during the day on on, on sunday so as we play through this latest run this is the, the the 12z run of the gfs and you can see here that we've got an area of low pressure uh, sitting to the west of iberia there's that area of high pressure building in across the southern half of ireland and uh, and england wales We've still got weather systems riding across the top of that, bringing it more unsettled conditions across the north. But it's this feature here that could uh, act as a very important factor indeed, because if you notice here during the, the uh, latter half of Friday and in the Saturday, this area of low pressure here uh, will allow some very hot air across Siberia, across the south of France, to then lift north. It's actually this feature this area of low pressure out over the atlantic and the eastward movement of this high then opens that door and allows the tapping of that extreme heat into the southern half of the british isles and like we've seen with june like we've seen even really with this outbreak as well the core of the heat always remains to the south and the southeast of the british isles here so we've got another system that then um, attempts to bring a weather system across uh, Scotland, across Northern Ireland. And there we go here. As we push into the day on Sunday, we've got that area of high pressure positioned over the continent. We've got that area of low pressure on the northwest coast of Spain. And then there you go. We've got that feed of very, very warm air. So this area of high pressure, this area of low pressure, acts as that wheel uh, drawing that air mass uh, north and northwestwards over the British Isles. All the while, we've got more cloud and uh, outbreaks of rain across Scotland and across even the northern half of England. We're going to see a significant temperature contrast developing here. Back to the UK view once again. And uh, you can see here, the uh, we'll look at the temperatures, the maximum temperatures day by day. Uh, and this is, of course, the... Uh, this afternoon temperatures into the 30s uh, really across the east and southeast half of the country during the course of a uh, of tuesday we still have 30s if you notice here 30 or 31 degrees across that southeast corner of the of the uk notice temperatures are significantly pegged back i think i still think 25 26 degrees all the way up towards the manchester liverpool area is possible i think the temperatures are kind of slightly uh, subdued on the GFS run then as you can see here that we've got the fresh conditions across the north we still have plenty of warmth across the south and southeastern half of the country here we'll play it through the next several days and you can see here that warmth kind of remaining uh, in place across the south much fresher across the north and then as we push towards the second half of the upcoming work week or weekend should I say We've got those 30s becoming much more widespread once again and becoming uh, stronger, more intense. There's a 35 Celsius uh, recording, uh, you know, temperatures 32, 33 Celsius, even to the north of Birmingham. If you notice here, we may have 30 all the way up to Manchester here. And then it's as we go into the day on, uh, on Monday, there we go here. So we've got uh, several spots recording. 39 celsius like i say already that there is a smaller chance of seeing 40 there is an increased chance of seeing an attack on that record 38.7 celsius recorded in cambridge three years ago here you notice here as we play even in the the, the, the middle portion of next week the modeling indicates that warmth and that intense heat focusing still across the southeastern half of the country here so all to play for when it comes to the heat at the end of this week
looking at the CFS V2 today, you can see here this is the upcoming seven day period, focus of uh, high pressure over the southern half of the British Isles, uh, low pressure to the north, systems riding over the top of that high, keeping Scotland, Northern Ireland, and even the north of England uh, relatively cool and relatively unsettled here. This is the uh, week two, which takes out the period 18th through the 25th of July. Low pressure to the north, high pressure to the south. Again, similar idea, plenty of warmth and above normal temperatures across the south. And we've got fresher conditions and more mobile weather coming in off the Atlantic across the top of that area of high pressure. Even into the week three period, 25th of July through the 1st of August, we've got a very uh, distinct uh, low pressure to the north, high pressure to the south. Uh, precipitation wise, very, very little in the way of rainfall, I think, as we go into the early portion of August here. You can see here actually wet than normal starting to appear on the CFS V2. This is week one, drier than normal across the board here. As you can see, uh, you know, drought conditions becoming more of a problem across Europe. Even across parts of the UK, we need to watch as well. Increase the temperature, increase the evaporation rate, and uh, we need to keep an eye on that. Weather than normal, if you notice here, week two, across the northern half of the British Isles, because there's those weather systems riding across the top of that ridge of high pressure. Drier than normal across the, uh, the, across the bulk of Ireland, England, and Wales. Week three takes us out to the end of July, and the uh, beginning of August here, we've got wetter than normal conditions across the north, drier than normal conditions across the south. Temperature-wise, finally, you can see here week one, we've got uh, we've got uh, slightly cooler than normal conditions across the far north of Scotland, warmer than normal central belt south, uh, focus of the heat, northern Iberia, into the south and central portion of France. That is where the core of the heat will be. Week two, uh, cooler than normal across the top, Warmer than normal across the south, very distinct north-south divide, if you notice here. And yeah, Scotland and even Northern Ireland, Northern England, you know, this heat wave, some folks are going to be saying, where the heck is it? We're not seeing anything up here across the north. That is just the type of pattern that we've got here uh, overall here. So um, looking at uh, some interesting things with regards to Twitter, now some of the latest tweets, let's have a very quick look and uh, see uh, what we're talking about here. This is an interesting t uh, tweet here, actually, by Paul Hudson. Uh, what are restrictions possible in Yorkshire as reservoirs fall to the lowest July levels since the drought of 1995? That is very interesting, actually, isn't it? And, of course, we're going to start to see an increased uh, evaporation rate as the temperatures rise. And that, of course, is uh, only meaning that we could have uh, concerning conditions. Could it also lead to a warmer, drier than expected August, by the way? That is on the table as well, based on, on what I'm seeing. But this is interesting here also. The Met Office has released an amber warning for extreme heat, uh, which uh, this starts actually on Sunday and is likely to extend all the way through into the early portion of next week here. A long way off, it's interesting how early the Met, Hof, Met Office has issued this, and I think that is in preparation so that people are aware of the extreme temperatures coming up and can act accordingly here. But, um, you know, it's a channel with uh, that, that endeavours to not hype things up, but certainly it looks as if it's going to be an extreme uh, end to this week and weekend coming up of weather across the British Isles. This could be an historic upcoming weekend. Keep it right here on my YouTube channel. I do appreciate you watching. Drop drop a comment and uh, let me know your your thoughts um, as we go towards the weekend uh, heat wave. Heat wave conditions at the moment, but I think we are going to see some extreme conditions appearing on our uh, charts as we move towards the weekend coming up. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.